welcome. We are so excited that you're here. We were just talking. I think this is our sixth or seventh time doing this event. And on, I'm Courtney Bernardi. On behalf of the Oconee Chamber and our Oconee Chamber Board of Directors, welcome to the State of the County event. I love this event each year because it brings us together to celebrate what a wonderful place this place is. So I thought on my way in this morning, I've driven these roads for a long time. For a period of time, I stepped away for about 18 years. I grew up in Oconee and left for 18 years and came back. And without a doubt, I can say that this is the best place to be. We are all beyond blessed to be able to call this place home, to have our businesses here, to have our kids here. And so I hope that today, as we go through these words that Chairman Daniel will share, that we realize and remember just how lucky we are to live in a place like Okumi County. So many people would love to be in a community like this. <laughs> Never take that for granted, the, the fact that we have such an amazing place. But the, the thing that makes this place so amazing, really, is the people. It's people like you that care enough to be here, to support one another, to work together, to build, to grow, to strengthen. It's all about the people who are part of this community. Whether you live here and you've been here for years, whether that you have a business and you've invested your savings and everything that you've had you've poured into, or whether you've been here for weeks or days, we all are blessed to be able to call a Coney County home. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to our chairman, Mr. Ch J John Daniel. Very blessed to be the chairman of the Roconi County Board of Commissioners and appreciate y'all's support over the last year. I uh, do want to recognize some of our uh, elected officials that are here today. We have Mark Thomas, who's one of our members of the Board of uh, Commissioners, Chuck Horton, Henry Harden, and Mark Saxon. Also, our Sheriff James Taylor is here today, uh, probate judge Mike Hunsinger, and then from the Board of Education, we have uh, Kim Argo, Tim Burgess, Ryan Hammock, Amy Parrish, and Michael Ransom. So thank you all for coming. Also from the city of Watkinsville, we have Christine Tucker, thank you. And from the governor's office, Hunter Spear, thank you for being here today. All right, first thing we wanna go over is just our budget. Um, our FY23 adopted budget was 38.8 million for a population of roughly 43,000 people. If you look, our highest uh, amount of money goes to uh, law enforcement with the Sheriff's Office at 29% of our budget. Public Works is second with 12%, and the Parks and Rec is third at 10%. If you look at our amount of money we spend on public safety to include the courts and the Sheriff's Office, as well as animal patrol and fire rescue, 41% of our budget goes to keeping people and property safe. On the revenue side, 47% of our revenue is coming from property tax right now, and that's down from 54% in FY23, which is the FY24 numbers we're looking at. Also, our local option sales tax has increased as well. We're up to 27% of our total budget coming from local option sales tax, up from 23% in FY23. Insurance premium tax, which is under the other. So roughly three million of that 4.5 million comes from the insurance premium tax. And that's a tax collected by the Commissioner of Insurance, and that's returned to each jurisdiction based on where you live. If you live within a city, the city gets that money. If you're in the unincorporated county, the county county gets that money. <coughs> we do offer that as a rollback on your millage rate automatically. Um, and that is the difference between the millage rate for people in the city and outside the city. So we, we take the money that the unincorporated residents have paid and, and reduce their property tax before that. The other money goes to the city. So that's, that's why there's a difference between county and city taxes. As you see, our tax digest has been on the increase. Kind of look at the chart, uh, 2008 is when the digest started moving downward and it bottomed out in 2012. 2016 was the first year 
um, the digest had exceeded the previous high. Um, during all this time, we've maintained consistent real millage rate of 6.68, and that was for 12 years that millage rate stayed the same through all the ups and downs of the, the digest changing. And that was the seventh lowest uh, millage rate in the entire state. Uh, the Board of Commissioners have voted to reduce the millage rate the last three consecutive years. 22, 22 was a four rollback, I mean, we dropped the millage rate to cover any inflationary increase in the digest, so we, we only took a portion of the digest that was new growth. 2023, board commissioners dropped the millage rate by 1.13 mills, resulting in a 5.52% reduction in the amount of property tax we collected uh, from 22 to 23. So our middle rate currently is at 4.824, which represents the fifth lowest in the state of Georgia. Personnel, just, um, there's no magic number on the number of people it takes to run a government. What we do is when a position comes open, we review it to make sure it's still needed. We reassign people as appropriate throughout the time. Uh, starting 2017, we were up to around 265. Right now, we're down to about 261. Uh, we got as low as 255 based on reviewing positions and moving. Uh, the only place we've added people back in it's, through, it's really in the constitutional offices. Uh, as you know, the clerk of court has one additional person. We've uh, put on five new deputy sheriffs uh, to help with that. We have two new dispatch positions that were added, and the tax commissioner has received two additional part-time employees. As most of y'all know that run businesses, it's very tough competition out there for employees. Uh, so we try to offer a very competitive benefit package and also have been trying to increase our base pay over the last several years. Uh, over the last two fiscal years, we've increased the uh, entry level for every pay grade $6,000. And that, that is compounded as long as people who have been here longer even received it more than that. Uh, I think the last one, the average employee received about $4,000 increase uh, based on our pay matrix. And that was accomplished all while reducing the millage rate for those two years as well. We also want to have a very healthy workforce, so we have a, a wellness program that's improving every year. So we actually have two days a year where you have to, where you can go, you don't have to go yet. Um, you can go and do so many push-ups, you gotta hit your age thing, and you have to run a mile uh, to hit your thing. And then some kind of stretch. So. That gave me credit for the stretch. I'm not quite sure if I made it or not. <laughs> there are some uh, privileges to be a chair, but I think they were scared to say you didn't quite make it. <laughs> so, um, first year around the mile, it was uh, not very good, but I almost got it under, under 10 minutes. So 10 minutes and six seconds on the mile this time. So, next year I hope to be below 10 on that. Some of you runners are saying, what? That's not, that's very good for me. <laughs> uh, new residential permits uh, for FY23, we had 178 new homes uh, that st were started. If, if you kind of look at the graph, in the early 2000s, you see significant growth in the number of homes that were coming in. So this was, residential sewer was first introduced in unincorporated areas during this time. So from 2002 to 2006, the average new number of new homes that were started were 435. Um, really, the, the number we're looking for is 250. At 250, we feel like we can maintain our infrastructure well. The school system has time to maintain their infrastructure as well. Uh, 2012 is when the permit started rising again. Uh, that happens to coincide with announcing announcement the caterpillar. I've heard a lot of business owners talk about when that, that news came out is when their business started increasing as well. We still have over 2,600 zoned lots in Oconee County from uh, previous rezones. 71% 71 of those 2,600 were zoned prior to 2009. And 80% of those lots are zoned for sewer. Uh, if you've noticed, Westland, which is on Highway 78, is under construction now. There are actually people living in that subdivision, and we accept, expect uh, activity in Parkside during the next 12 months. Water 
resources, Oconee County continues to be a water first community. Uh, last year, we've updated, in the last 12 months, we've updated our water strategic plan as well as our sewer strategic plan. Right now, the Falls Creek uh, water treatment plant is under construction to go to 3 million gallons a day. We're currently in phase two of a three phase process to get up to 3 million gallons a day. This includes a, a discharge directly into the Middle County River. Also includes drain water capable for irrigation that we'll be able to use at our parks and some of our facilities, as well as being used in the treatment plant itself. We're members of the Upper County Water Basin Authority. We're in with Athens, Clark County, Barrow, and Jackson County for our reservoir. And we're part of a group to, as well with the water treatment plant with Barrow and Jackson. Currently we're in the design phase that takes that plant to double the size of that plant. Based on our agreements with the other counties, we'll go from 4 million gallons a day of drinking water to 9 million gallons a day of drinking water when this is complete. We also have a partnership with Walton County for the Hard Labor Creek Reservoir. That reservoir is completed, and they're also a design there uh, for a treatment plant. Uh, thanks to Governor Camp, we were awarded a $42 million grant to help cover the cost of that project. And right now, we're committed to provide $12 million to that project. We're not quite ready for all that water yet, um, but this will help in drought proofing our community for the future. I just want to let you know water resources is what we call an enterprise fund, which means it, means it receives no support from the property taxes from the general fund. So they have to live on the own. They do occasionally receive money from, from SWAS to help with some of the capital projects. Talk a little bit about our planning code enforcement. Uh, Oconee County continues to be recognized as a plan first community by DCA. We completed the update of our comprehensive plan uh, last year. During that process, we had 11 focus groups with uh, five to 10 individuals in each of those groups. Each one of the municipalities had a focus group. We also had a focus group for the following corridors, Mars Hill, Highway 78, Highway 441. We also had a meet with Board of Education, developers, design professionals, and the Chamber of Commerce. We had a survey that went out where over 1,400 people voluntarily uh, submitted uh, responses to that survey. So we actually have the same number of care pairs we did at the 2018 map. Uh, we combined a tech technology gateway and workplace center. Um, we also extended some of the conservation areas in the county. As part of the survey process and going through the comprehensive plan, there was a, uh, seemed to be a lot of interest in looking at reviewing our uh, pouring zones for possible expansion, and also significant support to look at uh, brewery distillery uh, changes to our ordinance. So we're currently doing some investigation on that, and we'll be seeking your input as we get that information in and start looking at drafts on whether or not you want to move forward with that program. Public well, works and transportation. So this is this is a big one. This is what everybody why you can't get out of public. <laughs> <laughs> or why it's hard you couldn't get out of forward. So we're gonna start with some of our joint projects we have going on with DOT. Right now we're working on a roundabout at Rocky Branch Road, Snows Mill Road, the State Route 53. We're in right-of-way acquisition right now on that. So we've made an initial offer, we've received a counter, and so the, the process is working through to secure that right-of-way so they can start construction on that. In, in this agreement, we're responsible for design and right-of-way acquisition, and the state will cover all construction costs. Also, Rocky, excuse me, Ray's Church Road at Malcolm Bridge Road at State Route 53 um, is currently in design as well. We're almost ready for right away acquisition in that location. Again, very dangerous. Um, if you ever try to get out there, you understand. So, uh, so a roundabout, we will be going there as well. Also, everyone, the one that everybody was excited about was Union Church and State Route 53. We got that light running. That was a joint pro program as well. We covered, G GDOT covered the equipment for that, and we're covering the installation, and then we'll be, they'll be responsible for maintenance, but we're going to uh, take care of the electricity that goes there. Under our 
Wallace, thank y'all very much for passing to you all. That, that's been very helpful. We'll be, um, I think it's close to 27 miles on the road will be paved this, this calendar year because of, of y'all passing that. We also have some intersection improvements that are going on related to that. Uh, Lane Creek at Snow's Mill Road will have a roundabout and significant accidents there over the last uh, few years. We're in the right of way, the right of way plans are completed and we're about to start negotiations for a right of way on that roundabout. The next one to be done will be Union Church Road and New High Shoals Road. Um, the plans are finalized, they're working on the right of way plans for that so we can start that. The next one, which is in design, is Aspendale Road and Colin Perry Road. So that will receive a roundabout uh, very shortly as well. We are working on a trail that will run from Butler's Crossing um, down to Wellbrook Road. Uh, we call it the Hog Mountain Trail. We're in negotiations for right away there. Design is complete. Once we have right away, we'll go to bid to see uh, how expensive that one's going to be. Mars Hill Phase 2, which is the one you see going on now, they complete their lane shift, they're working on extending the culvert. And so you'll see a lot of activity as the weather stays uh, <clears throat> clear on the gradient from 441 back to Zaxby. will be where be, a lot of the focus will be over the next 30 days. You may have seen our contractors out there for the paving for this year. They're doing what we call the deep patching. So they're going to the, the bad section of the road, they're milling them out, back in. This is not your finished product. So they're, they're doing a different method this time where they come and do the deep patching and they'll come back with the paving crews and just kind of it'll be a lot smoother getting things knocked out. Uh, so we expect them to be another two or three weeks uh, for patching and then they'll come back and start putting the top coats on. Again, I want to thank Governor Kemp and our state, state house and the state senate for the additional money we received with the GDOT grant, or will receive. This will allow us to go to go ahead and do deep patching on Collin Ferry Road, as well as shoulder extension there. So that will help us get ahead of the curve and then allow us to come in with, we thought we might split, that's a 10 mile road, so we thought we might have to split that over physical years, but having this money will allow us to go ahead and pay the entire 10 miles in one swoop uh, next year. Uh, US 441 at is getting expanded from the county line all the way up to Aspendale Road. Right now, there's GDOT showing the construction levy for fall of this year to start construction on that phase of it. There's still no solution for Bishop back to where the four lane currently ends in Watkinsville. Uh, we expect to see some concept development starting, discussion starting by 2029. <coughs> It's going to be a little while before that gets going. Along the 316 corridor, Dials Mill Road, Dials Mill Extension, uh, we have a current approved concept there. There's a virtual open house on March the 22nd. Uh, that will run from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, and the comment period will remain open until April the 5th. Uh, so if you can make that, if you don't make it, they do have it recorded on, on that website. So Transforming 316 is the website for that. You can see everything they're doing along 316 from, from Oconee County all the way back up to uh, 85. Uh, in this concept, um, Dials Mill Extension will have a full interchange with roundabouts and Dials, uh, excuse me, so Dials Mill Road will be cul-de-sac, so there will be no access to 316 from Dials Mill, and then Dials Mill Extension will be your access to 316. Full interchange with roundabouts at the exit and entry trains to that. Our Minnux Creek interchange is currently in concept development. We really don't know how that's going to shake out. We've had several meetings, um, but nothing final yet. Construction is currently scheduled for 2027, and in Mars Hill is in concept development as well, as well as looking at McNutt Street and Mars Hill in the same area since they're so close together. Construction's not showing for a Mars Hill until 2030. And then Julian Drive, nobody has any idea what's going to happen at this intersection. Construction's showing for 2030. So probably a couple of years before we start seeing any concepts on that. As you know, Jimmy Daniel Road will be interchanged with roundabouts. Further length will, 
Lankford will be a flyover straight over 16, 6, 316, and also the Hope County Connector will be a full interstate. So they're saying 2024, it's a little confusing. I thought we were already in design, but it looks like they still haven't picked the design field, design bid field program yet. So 2024, you, you may see some action, but it sounds like it's probably going to be 2025 before you see any dirt need. I'll give you a good bit of time to try to figure out what you're going to do to avoid that area. <laughs> it is not going to be fun, so just go ahead and get ready and try to stay out of there as much as you can. There's also a project scheduled for 316 at the 10 loop. Uh, that interchange will receive some improvements uh, in 2030. We'll receive some, some funding for GDOT go look at a 15 bypass uh, away from Watkinsville. That's currently being reviewed at the management level. So we expect to see some concepts on that sometime this year. Um, based on some of the initial reports I'm getting from that group, uh, that's going to be a significant uh, improvement for traffic, even bigger than anybody might have expected. So there's a, high, there's a possibility that will jump up on the priority list the state. A little bit about our fire rescue. Uh, we just completed a ISO audit again and began maintaining a 44X ISO rating for volunteer fire department. Um, also, you see in the middle of that picture, we received a new air and light truck last year. Uh, Presbyterian Homes uh, donated $100,000 toward this vehicle, uh, which allowed us to advance the purchase of that significantly in our I also want to thank the city of Bogart. They, they provide us one of those rescue units you see sitting there. Um, we also have a new engine on order that should be delivered sometime this year for Station 7, which is also in Bogart. Right now, we're being told the lead time on a new fire engine is five years. So if we place an order today, we might get it in five years. Uh, we had 920 fire calls in uh, 2023 with an average response time of 7.85. Of those 920 calls, 20% of them were false alarms. So we need a little help from you on making sure your alarms are working. <laughs> uh, we had 3,464 medical calls for 2023. Uh, again, this is a great organization. A lot of people put a lot of time and effort in, into uh, volunteering here. And this would be, if you're looking for an opportunity to volunteer, this would be a great organization to look at as well. Uh, Parks and Rec was our Agency of the Year for 20, in 2023 for the district level as well as the state level. We also had one of our, our Oconee County residents receive a Volunteer of the Year for the district and the state. One of the interesting things is all the stuff that, that Lisa and Whitney have to deal with in the park. One I thought I would never see was a picture of an albino Burmese python Somebody was letting roam around without a leash. <laughs> Just to be clear, though, even if you have a leash, don't bring your snake. <laughs> uh, particip participation in our program has really continues to grow. We have over a thousand participants in our winter programs. So, as you can imagine, this is putting significant uh, demand on our infrastructure. So we did com complete and approve the park master plans last year, and this has been adopted by the board of commissioners. Uh, in that, we have a passive park on the middle of Coney River related to part of the property involved for a future uh, sewer plant. Uh, so that will have be a passive park with river access. The timeline on that is still to be determined. This is very, very long term. Uh, Heritage Park, we had uh, a lot of volunteers get together and help come up with a master plan for Heritage Park. That was accepted by the Board of Commissioners. Uh, that engineer, the engineer for that master plan has been awarded, and so they're working on engineering now. We're trying to get, we're going to get cost estimates and then phase the plans and get started on that construction as soon as possible. Uh, OVP, the next item there is tennis court expansion. We expect to award the engineering for that at our April meeting. Uh, that's paid for by Sploss Collection. And our goal would be to start construction on that in 2025. Also for O2 
LVP. Uh, VLC's been able to uh, secure additional access point into the park side uh, for an exit. So that'll be significant once that they start correcting the infrastructure in that in that development, then we'll have another way in and out, which will be awesome. Uh, Herman C. Michael Park will be converted to uh, basically our pickleball, outdoor pickleball mile court. So all the tennis courts will be converted to pickleball. Uh, we're also working on some improvements for stormwater and correcting some erosion issues that we had at the park. From the master plan, Bogart Sports Complex, there's not a lot of room to add anything, but we'll, we'll be making upgrades and infrastructure improvements there as part of that master plan. <coughs> then the Wendell and Betty Dawson Park, uh, which is the old LAS system, we will by the end of next year, hopefully the sewer plant will be complete. We'll be able to decommission the LAS at this location. This is located on, at, behind Northville County on Rocky Branch Road. So we expect that there will be an RFP issued this month to start the engineering on that park as well. This park is gonna be, the first phase will include indoor e-sports facilities, field space for soccer, football, those type of sports which will in turn free up a lot of our baseball fields that are being used for these sports now. So the Little League will get a big shot in the arm on field space as well. This will also, um, the master plan shows walking trails. We're also working on a consolidation of our water resources field services group, our road department and fleet maintenance. They'll be located somewhere on that property to get all those guys together so they're not hauling equipment halfway across the county to get it worked on. And we're also reducing number of routes we have to do. And that's going to, all this, this is phased approach, so none of this is happening tomorrow. We'll brag on our Kipo County County Beautiful Commission. Uh, they're doing a lot of great work here. Um, they kind of manage the funding for our Mars Hill landscape, uh, so spend a lot of time on that. Recycling, litter pickup. We have a partnership with the Sheriff's Office for litter pickup with our community service workers. I started noticing, as I ride around the county, I started noticing this particular car seemed to be everywhere. Park on the side of the road, up under a tree, and then you see these black bags of trash along the roadway. So I went and asked Cindy, I said, who is this guy that's all over the county? His name is Gene Stoltz. Um, and he takes his time to go out and pick up trash. He's, he's retired, just wants to help his community look better. Last year, he walked 671 miles, and he collected 1,137 bags of trash. One man. So again, this is a great organization for you to volunteer with. Uh, Cindy's here, so if you want a good project, she's got some for you. Elections. Election season is upon us. I'm not sure it ever left. <laughs> Our board of uh, election is a board that's made up of political appointees. There's one from each party, and then there's there's three from from the board of commissioners. And their job is to run an election without politics in it. So <laughs> it's a very tough uh, tough position to be in. So their their job is to run a fair election, compliance with state laws that they're in effect. We just completed early voting for our countywide presidential primary. Turnout was very low. Um, we expect much better participation in May and November. This was the first time we held elections at the new building. Uh, seemed to roll, everything rolled well. We, we picked up on a few things we're gonna change for the, the primary in May. Uh, but as you come in, if you see things that we think you think we could do better, please just give us a call and we'll be glad to take a look at Let's talk a little bit about our library. The uh, Okanagan County Library in Watkinsville is now open. And that was years and years of planning and saving money to get to that point. So I do want to say a special thank you to our state delegation, uh, Marcus Weedauer, Houston Gaines, and Bill Kowser. Uh, had a huge part in getting additional funding to help that come to come to be. Right now, Oconee County provides a $500,000 cash contribution to help run our two libraries. Um, 
We have a local library board appointed by the board of commissioners that has oversight over the governance of the, the library. <clears throat> All members are citizens of Oconee County, and they signed up because they care about library and they care about Oconee County. As you may know, over the last 12 to 18 months, we've had some significant controversy at our libraries. Programming was the first one to pop up. In the past, the program was left up to the individual librarian, head librarian at the library. There was no oversight from the local board, nor oversight from the regional management team. Our local library board has acted to, to correct that. So from starting earlier, in the last year, all programming is now reviewed by our local library board prior to implementation. Now, there's been other comments about the American Library Association. Just to clear the air on that one, Oconee County Libraries are not members of the ALA. The Athens Regional Library is not a member of the ALA. Based on the information I've been able to get, I, I don't find where we've ever been members we do have individual um, employees of the library that are members, but they're using their personal funds to be members of that organization. Uh, the other thing would be books. Some of the books some of y'all may have seen um, listed as being our challenge. So the library systems have a procedure in place to accept reckon, to review rec or the request for reconsideration. So if there is a book that's not appropriate, there's an avenue for you to submit that to the library board and it's reviewed by the librarians and it goes back to the final decision on whether the book stays or goes or is reclassified is with our local library board. Oconee County citizens are making the final decision on those books. There's, there's been a big uh, focus on four books in particular. If you hadn't seen the books, I would say that 99% of you would be shocked if you saw the books. Um, one of them was Let's Talk About It. Um, that is a book that is not housed in the Oconee County Library at all. Gender Queer, again, is not housed in Oconee County. Jack of Hearts and Other Parts, this is the book that was read at one of our town hall meetings, so if you hadn't seen that video, that's a good <laughs> this book is not housed in Oconee County Libraries, nor is it housed in any library in the Re Athens Regional Library System. Now these books are part of the Pines, there's, there's ways to transfer books in, but these are not, you couldn't challenge this book because it's not in our library system. So I've been told the first objective of, of this is to Make sure that materials that are questionable are moved to the adult section. And so the fourth book that's been getting a lot of press <coughs> is a book called Flamer. And it was housed, it is housed in the Oconee County Library. And it did receive a challenge from the citizen on that book. It went through the process, and our library board voted to move that book from ch children's section or young adult to the adult section. Next item is the Tour, Tourism and Visitors, Visitors Bureau. If you haven't been out to the William Daniel House, we've got them moved out there now. Uh, we started talking about this about this time last year, so uh, it's a really neat place to go visit. Um, if you hadn't noticed as well, we're doing a lot of work at the Eagle Tavern. Uh, the chimney was in bad repair, we're replacing some boards on the side of it, so uh, trying to keep up our historic properties. New administrative building is open, 44,000 square feet, with a price tag of $14.8 million. Now this is loss funded, so no property taxes are going to the payment on this, this building. Um, as, a, as we've moved into this building, we've surplused four buildings that were on our rolls. So four new uh, buildings are now on the tax roll. Is 
number of people who like to bring their pets to the that business with the government. <laughs> we put signs up says uh, you know, service dogs only, but it doesn't seem to help. <laughs> there was a lady the other day got a very nice looking dog, probably one of the best behaved dogs I've ever seen. So I go up to her and I said, I said, your dog is better behaved than most children. She goes, well, that's why the dogs are me and my kids are in daycare. <laughs>
what changes might need to be made in that. One thing we found about the existing exemption is first you had to know about the exemption, second you had to go to the city tax commission and apply for that exemption. And then even some of these exemptions require auditing to make sure you stay in compliance with the rules of that exemption. So very cumbersome for the tax commissioner and even for the citizen. We had we had somebody who worked with this government for 16 years that didn't know they could freeze their property taxes at age, or freeze their tax assessment at age 65. So that tells you um, the problem with that. Uh, so we came up with some alternatives, investigated those alternatives, then met with uh, some members of the Board of Education, talked through what we were looking at on making the changes, and here's what we kind of came up with. So we want to provide a homestead exemption increase for every homeowner in Oconee County. Currently your homestead exemption is $2,000, that will go to $5,000. And that will start in 2025 if you approve all 10 of those questions that will be on your ballot in May. Then in 2035, that $5,000 will go to $10,000. Automatically, on January 1st, when you're 65, you or your whoever owns the house with you, either one of you reach 65, on that next January 1st, your property tax assessment will freeze. So it will not rise above that point when you reach age 65. If something happens and there's a drop in value, you will receive the drop and then it will increase back up to where your cap is. So you can have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> in addition, on January 1st after you turn 75, you will receive an additional $10,000 home extension for 75 and over. As part of this, we're going to phase out our old exemptions that require the application process. So in order to do this, we had to go to the state legislature and get bills passed, which they did. It took 10 bills to fix it, okay? You had to repeal the old, you had to bring in the new, you also had to do it, bring in the new for the, the educational tax as well as the county. 10 bills had to be passed, which means you have 10 questions on your ballot on the end there. <coughs> if you like what, we're, what I just described, all 10 of those must pass. If one fails, it's done. So if you got any questions on that, we grab any of the commissioners that are here. Um, we're, we're hosting a chamber coffee uh, later in the week. We're just going to be talking about this again. We want you to be as educated as you can about this. A lot of work and effort's gone into it, and this is really good uh, for our county county citizens, not just seniors, but everybody. So I, I guess I'll end with saying that Stager County is strong and your future is bright. We're glad to take a question here and there. All the commissioners will be hanging around uh, after this meeting, so feel free to come up and chat with us. <coughs> Our next town hall meeting will be in April, so if you'd be interested in attending, come see us then. Thank you very much.